This short video will show you how to adjust the up and down travel limits on the linear actuators used on Nilfisk Advanced Equipment. Setting the up and down travel limits on a linear actuator will be necessary when you replace the actuator motor assembly or the drive nut. The first thing you'll need to do is to set the initial up and down travel limits to the recommended specifications before you install the actuator into the machine. These dimensions are listed in your service manual in the electrical section. Because of things like normal manufacturing tolerances, wear and tear on the machine, and differences in deck weight, you may also need to adjust the travel limit slightly once you've installed the actuator into the machine to make sure the attached equipment is moving to the correct positions when all the way up and down. In addition to some common hand tools, setting the up and down travel limits requires an actuator power cord adapter. This adapter is basically a remote actuator switch that allows you to run the actuator motor in both directions without having to use the main controls and without having to power up the machine. It also allows you to move to a more convenient position at the machine to observe the operation of the actuator more easily. We'll get into more detail on how to connect and use the actuator power cord adapter shortly. The first type of actuator we'll look at uses a polymer spring housing with a two-piece steel nut retainer to hold the drive nut in the spring housing. Note that some applications of this actuator also use a top spring housing guide to help center the top spring in the guide. This type of actuator is used on several models of walk-behind scrubbers including the Convertomatic and Warrior and some rider scrubbers such as the Avenger and the Aggressor. This actuator consists of a motor, and gearbox that drive a lead screw. The lead screw runs in the captive drive nut in the spring housing which moves the spring housing up and down, which in turn moves the attached piece of equipment up and down. The next type of actuator we'll look at has a steel housing with the drive nut crimped in the housing. This type of actuator is used on the squeegee lift on Avengers and Aggressors. It's important to have the up and down travel limits adjusted correctly on the linear actuators to make sure the attached piece of equipment is moving to the correct positions and to prevent possible damage to the actuator or the equipment. Let's discuss how to set travel limits on the first type of actuator we looked at, the type with a polymer spring housing and a spring housing guide. We'll use this actuator as a typical example. For the purpose of this video, we'll assume that you've installed the appropriate components onto the replacement actuator. Note that when you reassemble the actuator components, it's particularly important to install the drive nut with the nut retainer holes in the correct orientation on the actuator. The correct drive nut orientation will be specified in your service manual. We talked about the need for an actuator power cord adapter when setting the actuator travel limits, so let's go ahead and connect the adapter. Lift or remove the appropriate machine panel to access the battery or battery pack. Attach the two leads from the adapter onto the battery terminals. Note that polarity is not important. Note that if you connect the adapter leads to the main terminals, you get full battery group voltage to the actuator motor. This will allow the actuator to run at its normal speed. You can connect the adapter leads to a single battery if you want, but the reduced voltage will make the actuator motor run more slowly as it won't be getting full system voltage. Plug the adapter connector into the actuator. Press and hold the adapter rocker switch in the appropriate direction to run the actuator motor and move the spring housing toward the actuator gearbox. Continue to hold the switch until the in limit switch is actuated and the motor stops. Refer to the service manual for the correct spacing between the gearbox and the spring housing with the actuator in the in or up position. The distance specified in the service manual in this case is 1 16th to 3 16ths of an inch. Rotate the spring housing on the lead screw so it is positioned at the specified distance from the gearbox. Make sure to keep the spring housing oriented at the position it will be in when attached to the machine. Measure the distance from the gearbox to the end of the spring housing to make sure it's within specification. If the distance is correct, you're finished in setting the actuator in position. If the distance is not correct, rotate the spring housing on the lead screw as needed. Then measure the distance again to make sure it matches the specification in your service manual. Hold the spring housing in position, then press and hold the adapter rocker switch in the opposite direction to move the spring housing away from the actuator gearbox. Continue to hold the switch until the out limit switch is actuated and the motor stops again. 
Measure the distance from the gearbox to the end of the spring housing and make note of this dimension. In this case, the distance measures about three and one half inches. Refer to the service manual for the correct spacing with the actuator in the out or down position. The distance specified in the service manual is four and one eighth to four and one quarter of an inch. We measured the three and one half inches, so we'll need to adjust the out position cam on the actuator motor to increase the out position. In order to access the out position cam, we'll need to remove the adjuster cover. Note that there's a sticker on the adjuster housing that tells you to rotate the cam clockwise to increase the distance from the gearbox to the spring housing. When the adjuster cover is removed, you can see the out position cam inside the motor housing. While the in position cam is fixed, the out position cam has a spline coupling on the bottom to allow it to be rotated as needed. Use a half inch nut driver or socket to rotate the cam. Note that each audible click of the cam equals roughly 1 16th of an inch. We measure the out position distance at three and one half inches. It needs to be about four and three sixteenths inches, so we need to increase the out position distance by about eleven sixteenths of an inch. By doing some simple math, we can calculate that to be about ten or eleven clicks clockwise on the cam. We'll rotate the cam clockwise ten clicks, measure the out position again, see if we're in specification. Once we've adjusted the cam, we'll use the adapter rocker switch to run the spring housing to its in position. Then reverse the switch and run the spring housing back to its out position. Measure the distance from the gearbox to the end of the spring housing to make sure it's within specification. If the distance is not correct, readjust the cam as needed, run the spring housing in and out again, then measure the distance again to make sure it's correct. After making our adjustments, the distance now measures 4 and 3 16 inches so we're within spec and we're done setting the actuator out position. After you've reinstalled the actuator in the machine, use the actuator power cord adapter to run the actuator up and down manually several times to make sure that the in and out positions are set correctly. Readjust the positions if necessary. When you're finished with the adjustment, disconnect the actuator power cord adapter from the actuator and the battery.